Hi, I'm Maya Zimmerman, or Fantastic Fox, and I'm going to talk today about the music editor and using music in your projects and Picotron. Um, it's something I've seen requested a few times, so I'm finally just doing it. Um, basically, the music editing is going to be done in here, in the in the music editor tab. And the main sections are the instruments, the SFX, or the um, track info, and then the patterns. Um, and the reason this is called SFX is because it can be called in the program on its own with the with, with the uh, with the function SFX, um, whereas the patterns um, use music, and then you call the pattern number. I'll sh I'll, I'll show it in a bit. Um, so first, let's get some instruments right, because basically, uh, music is made up of the patterns playing. Um, you can have them repeat starting location and repeat ending location. Um, if you click on this one, when it gets to this point, it's, it'll stop playing. It won't repeat. Um, and this is the track number, which we'll get something. Let's get, let's get an instrument first. Um. So if you press the keys, the keys are Q, 2, W, 3, E. Um, this is something that you can pick up from documentation for Pico 8. Um, it's the same here. Basically, starting at Q, uh, it works its way up to O or P, uh, and you go up of register for um, the sharps and flats, and then starting at Z, it goes up to M and does the same thing, and it's an octave down. And, um, <clears throat> you know, basically, uh, the octave is controlled here. Obviously, you've got the two different octaves, and technically, like, two and a half on the keyboard, um, but then you can also change this here, and then it sets that sets the octave for the note um, the higher the number the higher the pitch let's start playing around with instruments so we've got this really basic um, this is a triangle wave you can see it's kind of like a triangle shape um, if you put a line here, like a triangle, and then another triangle. Um, and this shape, well, first of all, it can be changed by clicking on WT0 to WT1, which is noise. And WT2 and WT3 don't have anything currently. There is intended uh, functionality at some point for those. Our wave, let's shape our wave a little bit. If we adjust this, you can see the wave change, the, the wave shape changes. So it kind of gets, it's not quite as simple as uh, low is softer and high is uh, more distorted, but that's, um, whoop, I didn't mean to change the tuning knob, but that's, and you just need to get a sense of the role that these sounds play. <clears throat> so, 
Neptune gives you control over the every one of these that goes up is one half step, one note up, so like C to C sharp. If you change this to this notation, This is for just ratios. Um, so, you know, if you do three to two, that's a fifth. Um, and let's add an extra oscillator here so we can hear these side by side. So if you click on plus os or plus uh, dot fx or on here, you can click on these and these will add uh, additional little windows here that connect. Um, so yeah, let's get another oscillator in there. So you can hear how there's a harmony now. So let's take this down a little bit. So now we've got this sound that's got a harmony, and actually let's take this down. So you hear how it kind of like, it's this soft resonance that cuts through it. And then, um, what's some, what's some stuff? Uh, retrig and wide always, retrig means that if you put the same note twice on the track editor, which now we've got, uh, now we've got a sound. Let's, let's get into the SFX editor and then we can start going back to, um, the other functions on the instrument panel. I know I'm jumping around a lot. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, so yeah, if we type in these notes here, it plays, it plays it straight through, um, and if we make it length, this is length, this is loop, and this is speed, we can change the speed to a higher number and it goes slower or change it to a lower number and it goes faster. Now we can see uh, this retrig. Well, first, first we need to add an envelope to it because it's going to sound the same uh, because it's all just a solid note. It starts at full volume and when it ends it's at exactly full volume. So retriggering it won't do anything. So we want to change this envelope. This envelope, envelope zero, is attached to the main volume and the carrier volume. And if you click on one of these, it removes it, but we do still have the envelope zero on the main volume. So let's hear what that, what that does if we change this. So this first knob, if we make it higher, that's how long it takes to fade in to full volume. And then this, the second knob, is how long it takes to go from full volume to the volume on the third knob. Which we're going to set this to zero, so it goes up and then it goes all the way back down. Let's take this down to here. 
So now we have a, a little bit of a kind of a almost a guitar sound, right? So now, if we go in here, it plays it once. But if we go back to our instrument, let's re let's rename this. Now that we think this sounds like a guitar, we can name it guitar. And then when we want to use it later in our SFX, we can click on guitar. So if we select the instrument, um, you know, whatever instrument you select when you go into SFX, if you start using it, see we had instrument one selected, so this pink one is instrument one, this is volume 20, this is the note, and this is the octave. All this stuff can be changed in the actual uh, track editor. Manually, you can go, uh, you know, we want this to be zero. And now it's like our, now it's like our other one where it just plays that single note. But let's say we want it to retrig. And let's make it wide. Wide adds some options here to pan the stereo sound left and right. So you can get a slightly richer um, stereo stereo sound instead of it just being you know the same exact sound in both channels. You can pan it a little bit. You can pan the whole channel if you want. Um, and we're doing retrig, so let's see what that does. And if you want to play something, press space. If you're in SFX, it will play the SFX or play the track. If you're in patterns, it will play the music starting at the pattern that you're at. So let's press space. It's different, right? It's not just one note. Now it's eight notes. Each of these is re-triggering the envelope that says, you know, the note starting, bring it down, uh, and then, you know, go on, go on from there. So, if we turn off retrig, we've got our single note again. But let's say we only want to do a little bit of that. If we go here into the effects section, we can type R. And it retrigs exactly the one uh, that we just did. And there's a lot of effects that can go in here. Um, this is something that I haven't experimented with very much. If you go into the Picatron user manual, you can find all kinds of information about all the different effects that you can apply here. Um, so that's a little outside of this tutorial, uh, the different effects. Um, so let's see here, we've got, uh, this one, let's say this one's eight as well, except this one, we're going to do an octave three. So as you can see, we've got track zero and track one, that's SFX zero and SFX one. And we can turn off these tracks. They don't need to be on because they don't have anything in them. So if we press space to play, it, there's not much to it. And because the length is short and there's nothing else that's longer, it plays that section and then it goes to the next one. And the way this works is if something is set to loop, 
no matter how short it is, it goes forever. It will not, this pad, this track will not cause the pattern to move to the next pattern. Um, unless there's something with a finite length. And then if there's a finite length, um, it uses that. It uses the longest finite length track in a pattern to determine when it moves to the next pattern. So I know that's a little complicated, um, but that's the uh, basics of how that works. So each of these notes is about a 16th note in standard notation at, at standard speeds. It's about a 16th note and you can change your speed to make it 30 seconds more commonly or however you want to do it. But generally thinking about music writing, these are going to be 16th notes. Um, so these 16 notes are one measure, two measures, three measures, and four measures. So each track is about four measures of music. So let's write something. Let's write something really, really simple. Um, so we're going to have um, yeah, actually uh, And so what I'm doing here is a, a, a series of three. So it's um, going, you know, C, D, E, C, D, E, C, D, E, C, D, E. Um, and we can just copy if you highlight a section in the track, which you can only go so far because it only goes up until the edge of Picotron. Um, but if I control C to copy, I can control V, control V, and so now, uh, this all copy, this all repeats. And and then this does. So now we've got. Oh. So if we set length to zero and loop to zero, it just plays the whole thing. Alright, so now we've got a little guitar riff that's going along on the background, um, playing eighth notes in, uh, in a series of three at a time. Um, let's get another instrument, right? Let's, let's see what we can do with instruments. Um, let, how about a drum? What if we do a drum? So. With drums, the most most basic drum sound that you can get is putting this down at zero and bringing this down to a very low value. See, now we've got like a hi-hat.
like a closed high hat right here versus an open high hat. Um, but that's a little thin, right? And it's a little high pitched. <clears throat> well, we'll save this as open HH. And we can copy and paste instruments, so let's do that. And we'll bring this down. And we'll call this closed hi hat. Now, we want. Obviously, we can't just use hi hats, we want something with a little. Uh, a little depth, and if we if we tune this down, we eventually get lower uh, lower range sound, and if we make an envelope. If we take this envelope and put it to tune, and we have this, um, let's put both of these at 20. So, so, I control this, this blue curve here, with the right mouse button, and that decides where, uh, where the envelope goes to, uh, or where it starts at. This is zero, this is all the way, and then this is zero again. So because this is uh, zero attack, for the first knob, meaning it immediately starts here, and then after 20, it goes down to zero, which is down here. But that doesn't really sound... Maybe we don't want that on here cuz we let's do a snare right let's do a snare so let's add let's add that envelope to this let's get some actual sound in here so that sounds okay i think widen it up a little bit. Just a tiny bit, not much. Yeah, so it, uh, so that works for a snare. And now, for a kick, we're going to start fresh. And we're going to do, essentially, what we just did for the second part of that, which is connecting an envelope to the tune, dropping it down, putting this at 20, putting this at Actually, these are a 
And just like that, we've got our kick. That's a kick drum, so there we go. So now we've got a guitar, some drums. Um, so let's get a drum part going, right? So basically, um, easy way to think about drums is, uh, you know, put, uh, put a kick about here. Um, we'll put a snare here and we'll put closed hi-hats there and we'll put an open hi-hat right there. So now we've got drums playing constantly here, but it's So that's, but we don't want this to do this all the time. We don't want it to just be this constant beat. We want to, we want to fill in here. So we've got a regular beat going for one measure, and then it goes for another measure. And then let's do a drum fill. Uh, we want to do the snare. Um, and let's... Let's retrig the snare so that we can do a bunch in a row. Um, we'll put a kick in there and then three snares. then a kick, and then three snares. And we want this to loop at 32, starting at zero. So yeah, when you when you do a loop, you have a uh, loop zero is where the loop starts, loop one is where the loop ends. So let's listen to our drum loop. And then you can change it up, obviously, if you want to. You can do more, but let's just... Um, so now we've got zero and one at the same time, our drum loop and our guitar part. Let's listen, let's listen to them together. And then it goes on to whatever. So let's... have this loop. This just loops this one part. So we're ready to bring this into our, our program, right? So we've got a blank program here. Um, I like, I like to do music in, in it to, to test it out, to test it out. Um, so let's do music zero. That starts our music at pattern zero. Okay, so we add a function in it. We add a function update. And there we go. Now our game plays music. And, uh,. If we want to add some sound effects in there, we can go, you know, let's make, let's make a sound effect. Uh, we'll have it play an open hi-hat. All right. So now an open hi-hat is one of our special effects that we're going to use, um, or sound effects. Uh, so that's SFX2. 
So if we go into our update function here, and we do SFX2, so it's constantly playing that sound effect of the open eye at every frame. Um, so be careful when you use your SFX and your music that you are calling it at a time that it triggers it once, unless you really want it to be triggering it over and over and over again. All right, I think that's all of it actually. And um, if I missed anything or you have any questions about anything, feel free to leave a comment and uh, have a good day. Bye.